Turn with me to First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 31. First Corinthians chapter 1, verses 18 to 31. Let me read for you. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and the Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified as stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in this world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in this world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in this world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of our life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom of God, and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. Someday back when Dr. Paulson, my teacher, was here with us, one day after the meeting here at church, we were going back home. Most often we drive through the 288 16 Road uh, to come to the church and go, go back. And that day we took this uh, uh, Gasmer and then um, the South Postok and Bellway Age. At that time I was not that familiar with that road. And uh, uh, since we were running short of gas in our car, we uh, somehow we entered a gas station on the way. I filled the gas, I got into the car. And immediately I took the right, uh, the next right and started driving. And Jolie was saying, I think you took the wrong turn. I said, I took the right. She's like, but you exited to the wrong exit. And Paul says, he was also saying, oh yeah, we, were not, we are not traveling the same road we were coming through. In my logics, I thought I was right. But they were insisting that I was wrong. Paul was writing to the Corinthian church who were thinking that they were right, but actually they were running wrong. Some years back, they came to the knowledge of Christ. They were so excited in following Christ when they heard the gospel message. They understood that Christ came into the world for the salvation of sinners. They understood that only through repenting from their sins and believing in the sacrificial death of Christ and accepting Christ as personal Savior and Lord that any human being can be saved. They understood all these theological doctrines and they started following Christ. What happened to them is that as the time went on, their focus got changed. Some of the Corinthian believers, they got impressed with the Greek wisdom of those times. They got impressed with the rhetoric and the eloquence of Greek speakers. They found it very impressive of being able to debate about all kinds of theories and speculations. They started glorifying human wisdom. And when they began to glorify human wisdom, they began to glorify men and ultimately it created divisions and strifes in the church. They thought that human beings can even approach God through wisdom. Now the Apostle Paul was telling, it seems to, do, it seems to you that you are in the right way, but in reality you are in the wrong way. Paul is correcting them through this letter. And he told them about the right way. And in this passage, 
selected for the day we see him drawing their attention back to the greatness of the message of cross in comparison to the wisdom of this world the first thing that the apostle was saying is that god has denounced all human wisdom in approaching him the first stipulation or the first thing that the apostle was presenting before them is that god has denounced all human wisdom in approaching him if you look at the history of the world we can see the human beings trying to understand god in their own ways and in their own ideas they came up with a lot of philosophies theories and practical rites and rituals to somehow please god they want the divine pleasure they want to please god they want to approach god they are very clear with the fact that with because of their sins they are away from god and they want to go back to god and they came up with a lot of ideas philosophies theories rites and rituals so as to approach god but what we understand from this passage is that god has denounced all such human wisdom in approaching him it's not something in the new testament era it was, it was not something with non jewish people it's all about the human kind in his dealing with the jewish people also god denounced their human wisdom and in the matter of approaching him now look at verse 19 it is written there i will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning i will thwart we see the apostle paul quoting from a passage from the book of isaiah chapter 9 29 the background of this passage is that the king of judea was facing an attack from king sennacherib of assyria at that time the wise men in the court they suggested to the king king hezekiah to make an alliance with the egyptians and there we see the prophet isaiah coming to the court and saying to the king of judah the message that god denounced such human wisdom and we know the story that the angel of the lord came to the assyrian camp that night and killed 185000 of the assyrian troops the apostle paul is quoting that text as a proof text he says throughout the old testament we can see a lot of instances and this is one of the instances where god denounced human wisdom if you carefully observe the old testament passages we can see a lot of enormous number of instances where god denounced human wisdom look at the case of abraham Abraham and Sarah in their wisdom they thought the birth of the child Ishmael at their home will fulfill the divine promise but they it but it later proved to their eyes that this child became a trouble to them God denounced their human wisdom Gideon thought that with an enormous number of people he can win over the Midianites who were always troubling them who were crushing them for a while God's wisdom directed him to choose a few for a great victory. Cain came to the presence of God with his human wisdom, with the best that he can offer to the God. But God denounced his wisdom by rejecting his sacrifice and accepting a sacrifice of blood. All these examples do not God denounced the human wisdom in approaching him. And now in verse 20 the apostle paul says where is the wise man where is the scribe where is the debater of this age has not god made foolish the wisdom of the world paul launches a series of rhetorical questions there these answers to these questions are not given because the answers are obvious three groups of people are mentioned the wise men the followers of we can say king solomon 
They're great thinkers, but they, at the end of all their thoughts, they feel everything is empty. The scribes may refer to the Jewish religious people who are very familiar with the Talmud and all the Jewish scriptures. These people thought they are closer to God, but they were not. Now the debater of this age is a reference to the Greek philosophers like Socrates, Plato and all those philosophers of those times. Their words were eloquent and their arguments were forceful, forceful, but at the end they were nowhere. The wise men were lost in the wisdom, the scribe is empty in his learning, the debater of this age is silence. Because God made foolish the wisdom of the world or in other words God denounced the wisdom of the world. The first thing that the apostle says, the, says there is that God has denounced all human wisdom in approaching him. The second thing that the apostle tells them is that God has decided to save sinners through the message of the cross. Verse 21 says, it was pleased to God to save sinners through the message of cross. In other words, God chose a simple plan. To save the world. A simple plan which even a small child can understand. New Living Anarchy says about it as God decided. A man of God interpreted like this. God, has act, God had activated a program. It seems foolishness to the wise. But God made this as a decree that men will be saved through this activated program. A simple program. A simple way. But it is an activated program and God decided and God declared this is the only way that a person can approach God. God has decided to save sinners through the message of cross. If you look at the world or in the words of Apostle Paul, he sees the humanity divided into two streams. He sees one constant stream of unsaved people toppling into the eternal damnation without Christ on the other side other stream of people the ones who are saved through Jesus Christ they enter the eternal life and the eternal blessings the stream of people two streams one stream toppling into eternal damnation the other stream entering into eternal life Look at the first stream of people who are entering or falling down into the eternal damnation. Paul says the example of Jews. They say, or he says, they expected signs. Verse 1, or 1 verse 22. They expected signs. The Jews were looking for some signs. They felt that only through miraculous signs the faith could be established. When they approached Jesus, they were asking for a sign. They witnessed the miracles after miracles. Still, they were asking for a sign. And finally, we see in Matthew chapter 12, Jesus telling them, I can give you one ultimate sign. That is the sign of my resurrection. Hallelujah. They asked for a sign and they were given an ultimate sign. They were given the sign of cross, the sign of death, the sign of his burial and sign of his resurrection. The resurrection was a proof that Jesus was truly the son of God and his death has paid the penalty demanded by sin. But they didn't believe it. When they heard that Jesus rose from the dead, they made up the story, made up a story to cover the truth. They paid to the Roman soldiers to say that the disciples had stolen the body of Jesus. For them, Crucifixion was a shame. They cannot understand God being crucified. They cannot see God entering into a cursed situation. Deuteronomy, as, as per Deuteronomy chapter 21, 23, anyone hung on a tree is under God's curse. The Roman lawyer Cicero called about or said about crucifixion as the most cruel and heinous of tortures. The Jewish historian Josephus says about crucifixion as the wretched of all the deaths. They expected a victorious Messiah, but they cannot believe in a dying Messiah who is dying for their sins. So they stumbled at the cross. 
the Jews, secondly, the people who are, the, the stream of people who are entering into the eternal damnation. Secondly, the Greeks, according to the, this passage, they are searching for wisdom. They are thinking about reasoning. For them to believe in God, it is to be reasonable. That's why the Roman historian Tacticus called Christianity as a premier superstition. To them, cross is merely an intellectual defect. For them, it is just a madness. They cannot imagine of a sacrificial death of Christ or of a person who can lead people into eternal salvation. They say it is absurd to think of God coming into the world to save the humanity. They say it is ridiculous to think of a holy God needs to be appeased by the sacrifice of a person. They say it is nonsense to think of salvation achieved by faith in Christ Jesus. So they ridicule the cross. One stream of people entering into eternal damnation because they search for signs. The others search for wisdom and reasoning. Remember the other stream of people. This cross, though it seemed foolishness to this world, to the other stream of people, they found the cross as the power of God and the wisdom of God. They understood that the death of Christ is for their curses, shame and suffering. They seek to ponder the wonder of cross. They cross over the world with cross. They bring crucified, they bring crucified Christ before the world. Yes, they decided to follow the cross, though it didn't seem wise in their perspective or in their reasoning or in their logics. They decided in God's way or they stepped their steps in accordance with God's plan and followed the message of cross though it was not that so logical in the worldly view. The apostle tells them God has denounced all the human wisdom in approaching him and how God had decided to save sinners through the message of cross. The third thing that he says in this passage is that ultimately God was exalted through his wisdom and strength. It happened in a jungle one day, a lion with a big ego went around asking, for, asking to the other animals, do you know who is the king of the jungle? He asked, or he roared to the monkey, he asked, who is the king of this jungle? Monkey said, Mr. Lion, you are the king. He screamed to a zebra and asked, who is the king of this jungle? Zebra said, you are the king, Mr. Lion. Seeing a turtle, he bellowed, who is the king of this jungle? Scared turtle, he said, you are Mr. Lion. You are the king of jungle. He came to a lion, uh, he came to an elephant and asked the same question, screaming to him, who is the king of this jungle, the elephant used his trunk, grabbed this lion by the tail, spun him, spun him around. Several times he hit him hard, and dunked him into a mud hole, and slammed him into a larger tree. And he said, just because you didn't know the correct answer, there is no reason for you to get upset. Just because you didn't know the correct answer was no reason to get upset. I want to just take that statement in this line of this scripture. The message I found is just because he chose us was no reason for us to boast. What happened to these Corinthian Christians? Some of them started thinking about them in a high level. They thought that they are great or they are special. That's why God selected them. They started boasting in them. Some of them went to a level of spiritual arrogance or spiritual pride. The Apostle Paul was correcting them. Friends, there is no, no chance for or no option for you and I to boast. There is no option for you and I to boast. 
it's not because of our wisdom that we were saved it's not because of our wealth that we are saved it's not based on any background the world is a system of best the brightest the beautiful and brave has no status before god paul brings out in the verses in the continuing verses in what to was in verse 30 and 31 he says it's because of him that you are in christ jesus who has become for us the wisdom of god that is our righteousness holiness and redemption therefore it is written let him who was was in the lord apostle paul was declaring jesus as our righteousness it means god looks at us being completely right in all that we have thought said and done because of his grace and mercy he declared jesus as the holiness as our holiness this is a way of saying the same thing as righteousness but in a slightly different way god looks at us or god looked at us and our lives and he he looked us looked at us through jesus christ and he found us in perfect obedience to him and he made us holy and he tells he says he see our redemption means in the greek it means to pay or paying of a ransom even though we had no value to brag about the price or even though there's no chance for us to post in god paid a price for us and bought us so what he says is that as a whole the reason for our existence now is jesus christ therefore let him boast boast in the lord let him boast boast in the lord just in same line with the other scriptures like psalms 44 it says in god we make our boast all day long we will praise your name forever galatians 6:14 says may i never boast except the cross of our lord jesus christ through which the world has been crucified to me and i to the lord but he says is the reason for our present blessing eternal blessings and all kinds of spiritual enthusiasm that we have or all kinds of uh, abilities to approach god is jesus and therefore do not boast about yourself boast in lord jesus when we close our eyes for a moment as we wind up this sermon may tell you the human wisdom is good in all areas except one man with all wisdom cannot understand the message until god opens hearts and eyes the message of cross is not that logical to the world but it is something great the message of cross is absolute and stands above all human wisdom this is the only activated program through which a person can be saved but as i said the message of cross creates a division within the humanity the entire world is categorized into either one or two groups i either in one or two one of those two groups the stream of people who are going to perishing or who are going to perish and the stream of people who are going to be saved you and i are in either one or the other there is no half way house there's no neutrality 